Hello YouTube. Thought I'd do a little video to show you my 1963 split screen Westphalia camper. It's not something I've done before. I've had the bus a long time now. I think I purchased it in 2008. So the bus itself, um, it was advertised on the Samba. Um, if you're into Volkswagens, old Volkswagens, you'll know about that site. Um, it's it's just uh, it's an encyclopedia, for want of a better word, for everything classic Volkswagen and some Porsche. Um, there's a you know there's a classified section on there. There's all the forums for for every different model and variation of classic Volkswagen that was ever produced, um, and there's a lot of very knowledgeable guys and girls on that site. So if you ever have an issue with an old Volkswagen, go onto the forums, click away your your worries, and um, I'm pretty sure that someone else has come across it and dealt with it, and they'll be able to tell you. Anyway, going back, it was on the classified, and um, it wasn't my first choice bus. I was actually after a 13 window deluxe, and it was Turkish, which is my absolute favorite Volkswagen color um, the car was sorry the bus was advertised in California um, I just picked up the phone rang the guy and unfortunately he said an hour previously he'd taken a deposit on it I was I must admit I was gutted because um, I really wanted a Turkish bus just my ultimate favorite color so um, that same evening uh, I carried on looking and I came across an ad for this bus here, the one I'm sitting in now. It was reasonably priced. Um, the exchange rate at the time was really good for us guys in the UK. It was almost $2 to the pound. So, um, so I read through the ad a couple of times. I was still, still thinking, should I hang on for a Turkish bus? Uh, hold on to my money but um, I just couldn't I'm sure some of you know what it's like you got money in your pocket you want to spend it so I kept coming back to this ad for this bus it's um, as you see when we go outside it's mouse grey and pearl white um, which as I said wasn't my first choice of colours but I've definitely come to love it now and I really do like it um, so the I contacted the seller, uh, just called him on the phone. Um, I wasn't going to go over to the States and see this bus. I didn't want to lose it. So I asked some questions over the phone. Um, I got the answers I was expecting. Uh, I must admit, it was a bit of a leap of faith when um, I actually did the deal. Um, because as soon as I did the deal over the phone, I was, I was like, does this bus exist? Have I just wasted however many thousands of dollars? So anyway, I did a bit of a, a bit of a dive into the seller, and luckily for me, which I should have done before I agreed to buy the bus, but luckily for me, he was a legitimate seller, and. Um, he's still doing buses to this day so Craig if you're watching I still love the bus and it's definitely my keeper and thanks for selling it to me all those years ago um, so one of the things I did when I was looking at the ad um, it was a mostly original paint and I mean I don't know how much it had been touched in but it wasn't much so there was holes in the rockers um, it wasn't bad it wasn't a basket case by any stretch of the imagination it was a running driving bus um, but you could see everything about it warts and all so I had a bit of confidence knowing that the bus that I was buying sight unseen apart from a few pictures on the Samba um, was gonna be the bus that I was gonna be happy with anyway uh, the shipping I think the bus the bus was in um, Washington State so I had it um, uh, put onto a low loader transporter shipped down to California 
there was some issues at the time with the shipping company because they were changing which ports they shipped out of and it escapes me now i don't know if it shipped out of san francisco or los angeles i honestly can't remember i'd have to check through the paperwork but anyway i think it took about six weeks to arrive and um came into harwich docks in the uk i believe um which is a shame because i'm not that far from southampton so if it came to southampton i mean breeze for me anyway um my friend mark walker um he was I honestly can't remember now. My mind's terrible. I think he was collecting a car as well. I could be wrong. Anyway, we ended up at the docks and um, went to collect the bus. And I think when they loaded it in California, they hadn't switched the lights off when it went onto the um, container ship. So um, the battery was completely flat. We whizzed off to a local Hal Frauds, um, got a battery, put it in, fired it up. Now, I didn't have a trailer or a transporter to get it home, but I don't, I don't, I, I'm laughing. I, I don't recommend you do this, but this is what I did to get my bus home. I think they were Mark's plates. <laughs> I'm getting him involved in this now. They were some French license plates. I don't know where he got them from or where I got them from, but we just stuck them on the front and rear of the bus. And as we're driving out the docks, traffic's quite busy. I literally get to the front of the queue to pull out the docks. And there's three police cars all in a row in the traffic. The first one goes and I'm thinking, oh, thank God for that. They can just go and then I'll disappear off behind them. Second one flashes me out. <laughs> oh, my Lord. So I pull out and we're in traffic in town for, say, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. With the police car in front and the police car behind me. And I'm thinking, if they pull me over, do I pretend to be French <laughs> and not speak English? Because obviously what I was doing... Um, the vehicle um, wasn't taxed, wasn't, did I insure it? I think I, yeah, I think I insured it, but it wasn't, obviously didn't have any tax, road tax, didn't have any MOT, which was required at the time. Um, so I thought, well, if, if I get stopped, I am in a bit of trouble. So at that point, I was starting to think, this is not a great idea. Anyway, um, long story short, the bus drove faultlessly all the way home and it must have been about a three three and a half hour journey it's from the other side of london so i have to go all the way around london on the m25 um, if you've ever been on that road in any kind of vehicle you know at the best of times it can be pretty um sketchy but got home no problem um and then started to do the kind of same re recommissioning kind of work um it had um let's start on the interior so it had some um like hardboard gray painted interior panels from the door cards cargo door cards and the tailgate stuff like that um it looked okay but it wasn't perfect now i wanted to get the correct um salt and pepper tmi interior pricey i think it was anywhere from 600 to 900 dollars at the time um while the bus was in California. When I spoke to the shippers about me purchasing this kit and getting it sent to the bus, they advised me against it. They said, if it's not bolted to the bus, don't do it. You run the risk of it going missing. And subsequently I've heard of other people who have, especially if you're from the UK and you're into importing vehicles, you know, you try and ram those things with parts and stuff like that. but. Subsequently, I've learned that stuff does go missing. So I'm glad I took their advice and didn't um, purchase the TMI kit, however nice it was, and, and just get it put in the bus in a package. So what happened was I got back, I took out the uh, interior panels, 
and um, I thought what am I going to do? I wanted a cheap, quick, easy fix. Um, it was winter time so what I did was um, I purchased these panels um, or did I make them? So long ago now, I honestly can't remember if I purchased just the MDF hardboard, whatever you want to call it, panels, or if I actually made them myself. I can't remember. Anyway, I was working uh, on a job, and as I walked into town to get some lunch one day, there was a uh, shop that sold sold wallpaper. Um, so I just popped in, and there was, I must admit, there was nothing that took my fancy. It was all far too modern for what I wanted. But then at the back of the shop, they had just two rolls on display. And one of them, the one I actually purchased here, um, was um, kind of it's got like a retro kind of geometric pattern to it. Something you definitely would have seen in the 60s slash 70s. So I thought, you know what, I think that will work quite well. It's got orange, it's got grey, it's got a bit of brown, it's got like a an off-white, which is more like the pearl white on the top half of the bus. So I just thought those accent colours were picked up on the wallpaper with the rest of the bus. And uh, over the course of a few nights, one winter's eve uh, or two, I stretched the wallpaper over the panels and then liberally gave them probably about five or six coats of like a water-based um, varnish just to protect them. Uh, and they went on the bus. And I must admit, I liked them from the moment I put them on. Uh, so much so that I decided not to go ahead and order the panels from TMI and get them shipped to the UK. I'm happy with what I got and it saved me a, a chunk of money. Um, the, the rest of the interior, although this bus was originally designated uh, a Westphalia SO33, I th the time the bus was in the States, the interior must have been ripped out. Uh, I know the bus was left in a field for many years and had pack rats living in it. That might have paid, put pay to the uh, interior. So uh, someone in the States sourced an SO42, which is a later um, style Westphalia interior that you still sat found in buses. This one is actually from 1966, so it's only three years newer than the actual bus itself. And to be fair, I quite like the layout, it goes well in the bus. With regards to the exterior, um, there was some welding to be done. It wasn't massive, I mean, it was rockers both sides. Yeah, rockers both sides, a couple of closing panels, battery tray, which they all always seem to go there, and I think a couple of jacking points, maybe an outrigger or two, I can't remember now. Um, so when that was done, I then uh, blended the paint as best I could. To be fair, I think if I did it again, I'd get a better paint match. I just went off the code for mouse grey paint, but um, I think... If I well, I could even redo it now. I'd, I'd take the bus to a, a paint shop, get them to put a spectrometer or whatever you call it onto it to get a closest match as possible, and then I blend it in. Um, so the bus, the bus is all solid. It's painted. It looks. I think it looks great. Um, now the storage I had for it when I first got it was great because it had plenty of height for the headroom. Uh, I lost that storage, so. The only storage I could find after that was uh, an up and over garage, a single car garage, and they're pretty tiny. Anyone in the UK will know how big they are. So this bus wouldn't go in one, so I had to get it lowered. So it went from a um, uh, reduction gearbox at the back to straight axles out of a later Beetle. It's got a four inch narrowed caster beam on the front with drop spindles. Um, and it sits pretty low. I mean, it's n it's not slam slam, but it is pretty low. I mean, I've got to be careful with the potholes and sleeping policemen or speed bumps, whatever you want to call them, um, and getting on and off the ferries when we go over to Europe. But um, it's fine. I mean, the lowest point on it 
is the steering box, which has taken a bit of hammering. Um, and I want to do a box raise. I did have the parts for it, um, but then I sold them. I just, I don't know at the time, I just thought I'm never going to get around to it. And I think it was a 40 millimeter raise, which means you have to get your steering column shortened. I'm not up for that. Someone used to sell a 25 millimeter shortening kit, uh, lift kit. Um, I don't know if they still do. If they do, please get in contact with me and let me know um, because it's something I would like to do because that way you don't need to shorten the um, steering column and it lifts the wheel up away from the dash and from the front screen. If you own or drive a split screen bus, you know that your hands are pretty close to the dash and pretty close to the screen. So that's, that's something I might do in the future, but it, it's fine now. Tubs, it hasn't got any tubs uh, in the front wheels wheel wells it does scrape a little especially when i hit a bump but to be fair it's not that bad it's got low profile tires on it it rides pretty nice the engine is the one that came with the bus it's a 1600 single port it's been brilliant touch wood it stays that way um, I always had vis uh, envisaged putting a bigger motor in, um, nothing crazy, 1776, something like that, um, 1835, I don't know, maybe something like that, nothing, or 1915, massive, uh, would be the, the biggest I'd put in, but nothing, nothing sort of two litre plus. Um, but to be fair, the motor has been fantastic, and all I've done is service it, and it keeps going, so I think I'm going to leave it like that. Um, I do use the bus not as much as I'd like to but um, it has been to Europe numerous times for shows, camping, surf trips, stuff like that um, and I, I certainly don't have any hesitation to hop in it and, and take it overseas It's I, I, I used to be really precious about it wouldn't take it out in the rain or anything like that I think where I've got older now and I'm realising that you know the bus is protected I've, I've painted it underneath I've sealed it I've done all the rust repair um, get out and use it God's sake you know while I can while it while I'm still the owner you know because there will be a time in the future when it you know it'll be time for me to get rid of it when I just won't be using it so I'm I'm, I'm less precious now I mean I still look after it don't get me wrong but I take it out when it's raining or when it's grey, like today. In fact, it's just started raining now. I did come out this morning because it was sunny, but we're in the UK and that's what happens. Um, so I hope you like the bus um, and I'll try and stitch the video together um, so you get an idea of what I've been talking about. And um, I will be posting up road trip videos, probably in this bus and in some of my other classics um, and of course I've got friends that are all into classic cars so I'll be showing some of those as well um, thanks for watching if you uh, if you like what you see do the like subscribe share thingy thingy I don't know and um, I'll see if I can produce some more stuff for you cheers <laughs>